Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Enrico from Italy. Uh, and um, I'm going to talk about um, a little kind of um, um, uh, sorry. Um, um, well, uh, I'm going to talk about a, um, a sort of prototype uh, system I made to publish Debian information called Debian Data Export. Um, So the point of this is um, Debian's a bit of a data hell. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of different kinds of data in Debian. Um, you know, package files for binary packages, which are in RFC 822-like format, um, split by distribution, then by architecture, or for source packages, well, it's the same. The mapping between maintainer and source packages is available in a few places and in different formats. Um, that tags information has its own format as well. Um, the depth tags, well then we have the depth tags vocabulary of tags, uh, extra sources of depth tags information, popcorn rankings that can be used to, useful to have so that Packages can be sorted by popularity. Um, bug information, but you can access the bug tracking system in, in several ways, all with different formats. Um, package change log desktop files for packages not installed is another thing that people may need to, uh, to, to use for uh, features like add a new application in this menu. Um, information about what's in the new queue, package screenshots, APT file information, uh, statistics about the archive, uh, license information, uh, localization information, um, status of use scan, build e logs, but, um, uh, size and lines of code of packages, Debian weather reports. I guess you know the Debian weather reports, they tell you how installable is uh, unstable today. So you know if you can uh, upgrade or if you are going to end up into a dependency mess. Um, Debian pure um, specification, um, information specific to Debian pure blends, what, what kind of, what flavor of Debian this package is used in. Uh, UDD, which has all of those and, no, not all of those, but is yet another data source accessible in a different way, yeah? So can you answer that? So copy process, that Debian for entire tree? Uh, I don't know. When, when you go to IRC and, see the, and go to dash Debian, I have Debian, no idea because you, I'm not the on... the topic, you see the weather. Okay. I've no idea because, uh, so you are, you're not asking, you're saying that it's used there. Uh, I need to look for it. It's a data hell. Y you need to dig for all of these things <laughs> and find out where they are, what's their format, what's the protocol to download them. So you can th probably you can think of more, like uh, Joy has been showing graphs of how the helper is used. And that, yet, you know, yet more information that we have. That most of us generate deb statistics about something in Debian and, and put them somewhere, and then we are happy with it. And then no one else uses them, except sometimes people mention them somewhere, and people are like, hey, I've been looking for that for years. So, um, and it's a bit of a shame, because uh, some of these things could potentially be used, like, by package managers to tell uh, this package has bugs open since, uh, R has RC bugs open since more than a month, that package has less RC bugs, but the other package is not as popular. You, you could, you know, make use of all this information in um, in an interface. So, um, and then besides, you know, the data itself, there's formats. So we got RFC 802-like files used for several things, which has a sub-format for package descriptions, 
which, you know, empty line starts with a dot, uh, and uh, to make an, an, uh, a bullet list, you, uh, it's kind of wiki-like. Tags have a subformat as well in the packages file. Dependencies, they also have a subformat. You got SOAP interfaces, LDAP interfaces, SQL interfaces, plenty ad hoc formats. Uh, there's a HTML scraping going on. I think VAC made an HTML scraping interface to the BTS or something, um, or, or to something else. Um, And then where do you find the data? Sometimes it's on the mirror, sometimes it's in a directory on people, Debian org, or sometimes you need to log into the right machine that will have it in the file system. Um, sometimes it's elsewhere, outside of the Debian network. Um, sometimes you can only access it from specific machines. Like I if I'm setting up um, a, 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 a package search interface, on my own server, I cannot access UDD, for example. Um, something um, y you can only download it from the server, something you can actually compute it on the user system to relieve, um, uh, to, to relieve servers of computational things. So obviously, um, y if you want to know what other, um, if you want to know popularity information, you need to get it from the server, but if you want to know um, if a package is installable, you need to compute it on the user's machine to be really precise, because they may have a different sources list. Something can be computed only by cooperation between the user machine and the server, such as package recommendation, because in order to compute that, you need to index all the popularity contest submission, and then query that using information about what packages are installed in a user system. So we got a bit of all of that. And um, so I, my, what, what I, I, start, I, I, I want to start writing uh, a replacement website for the DevTag submission, the DevTag stack submission page. And I usually, or, or in, uh, even in the existing one, I usually have the problem that I need to collect a lot of data, such as information about all packages in every architecture on specific um, releases. And so, well, I had the problem of how do I get all the data that I need, uh, kind of got bored to go and track all the places where I should take it out from. And, um, and then I realized that the information that I was collecting myself was used by other people. So, and I had a piece of code ready from other projects and I thought it all fits together, so I made this prototype. Um, my goal is that producing data should be easy. Um, the major task should be computing the data and all the rest should be kind of easy to do. Finding data should be easy as well and uh, down, downloading the data should also be easy in terms of protocols and in terms of format. That was the idea that I'm, I'm attacking here. Both to, to try and use it in depthex.debian.net, which um, I would like to allow people to tag all packages in Debian, Ubuntu, Pure Berlin, possibly other derivatives on all distribution, on all architectures. Um, or I would like to make auto-completion in web form fields. It's, you know, it's, it's a few, well, it, it's some lines of JavaScript, but the problem is getting the JSON information. Um, and um, I would like also to have, to, to get, to build some machine readable interface to all the data that I produce. Uh, you know, I produce like depth text information, um, and, uh, and well, I, I want it, it, at the moment you need to, you know, the, to know the URL and, and get it, so I would like to make like a convenient interface. So, the prototype, which I'm going to demo, um, and I will impossibly increase the font size and hope that it, it works.
Hallo. Oké, okay, en dan? Oké, okay, leuk dus. Well, oké. Okay. The solution is DDE Debian. Well, the solution, the prototype I made is DDE Debian Data Export, which um, blah. Which ha is kind of like a file system. Uh, well, it's like a tree. Um, well, okay. It's like a tree of uh, where, uh, well, you got plugins. Plugins generate the, well, access data, and they publish it in, in, in a file system kind of way as branches of a tree. And you can query every bit of the tree, and it will give you data. So, for example, I can list the... I can list, um, well, I made a plugin to export the, the polygen grammars installed in the system. And then you just, uh, oh my god. And just say get a grammar, and it will automatically run polygen and give you the output. That's a kind of simple thing. Or you can ask it, give me the same output in JSON format, and it will do that. Or give me the same output in uh, uh, give me the same output in YAML format, and it will do that. So the plugins kind of produce uh, it's. It's written in Python. The, the plugins produce a Python structure with the data to export, and the, the front end will encode it in whatever the user requires. And that kind of solves a bit the format issue, because when you query it, you just ask it, give me the data in this format, and it will do that. Um, so you can list uh, what's available, and uh, you can get a value, and you can also ask for documentation about, well, not here, um, but uh, the plugins uh, allow uh, allow to get documentation about, oh, okay, even here, um, allow you to get documentation uh, about every single piece of the tree, so it's all self-documenting. You can browse the tree, and uh, know what's around, and uh, know what you're getting. Now, this is kind of command line, and it's a bit awkward to use. Well, you just run, uh, um, run it uh, dash dash server, and it blows up because I'm already running it with dash dash server somewhere else. Um, when I, um, okay, can I have a browser? You can run it as a server, and you get an interface that you can browse to see what data is around. Um, it tells you about the available output types. So you can get out, um, is it? Uh, at the moment, th there's output, um, output uh, formats for CSV, JSON, uh, HTML, self-documenting HTML pages, uh, Python, Pico, YAML, and text-based uh, presentation, just to see what goes on. So anything that every piece of data that you see 
in this tree, you can query it in all these kind of information, in, in all these kind of formats. And when it works as a web server, the, um, it, it's restful. So the tree is directly mapped into URLs. So the way it works here um, is you go around the tree and you're like, okay, oh, there's nice polygon grammars. What are these grammars? Okay, the description of each grammar is generated using polygon. So everything the plugins do is completely dynamic. Um, and then you get the information and you add the uh, question mark type equal JSON and you get a JSON to download. So basically you, you go around the tree and you say, okay, this is exactly the data I'm looking for. Go away. Um, this is exactly the data I'm looking for. Then you take that URL, add the data format you want and use it in, in whatever software you have. Now, it exports JSON, which means you can use it from a web page. From JavaScript, you can make mashups and whatnot, just uh, getting the data. In this case, another example is um, apt, pa a apt package information. So, what you get inf at this level, you get information about all packages, and you can go down and get information about a single package. So depending how high you are querying the tree, you, you get more data. The more you go down, you get specific data. You need to download the whole package list, then you query at a higher level. You want information about only one package, you query at a low, lower level. And when you browse around, you get an example of what you get. So when you are trying to create your JavaScript uh, thing, that, then you can look around. Or uh, you have, well, completion for binary package names. I, I didn't put documentation yet over here, but it, I just added to the plugin and it works. And I can put a prefix and it will give me, you know, all the uh, devs that um, have that prefix. There are several plugins written. Um, for example, uh, I made a plugin for the Aptexapian index. That I don't know if you heard of it. I blogged about it bit heavily uh, some time ago. It's it's a big index of all uh, of of that of package information, tags, and things like that. That it's um, that is extremely extremely versatile. You can do a lot with it, and you can see you go here, and it tells you what's around. Um, you can put a query with keywords, say uh, image editor in the URL, and then you get a data structure very fast with a tag cloud related to those features, possible completions, corrections, list of packages that match, um, suggestion for uh, extra keywords to add, and lots of things like that. All nicely in JSON. If you want to implement um, an HTML um, If you want to implement a dynamic page using it, it's easy to do. There you have it. So it starts with a tag cloud. As I type, everything changes. I have possible completions and suggestions and packages. And you can see is. Uh, it's pretty fast because the the the, um, the back end is very fast and it, and this is a static html page or for example you can use it to complete package names in pretty much every web form so there you go pretty much on the fly um the source of this is a static HTML page. It can be put in the Debian website. The source of this is uh, uh, it's basically an HTML input 
you put it, you give it a class, and you tell it from what DDE server to get information, and it works. Well, you also include um, the little bit of JavaScript, but that can already be put in like every Debian web page, and you automatically get uh, completion with proper fallback for browsers that don't have JavaScript. And uh, whereas if um, package manager wants to download popcorn information, one can make a popcorn export, um, and, and it's very easy to query. The data space that is exported um, does not try to export every single thing. It does not, it does not try to be a, a super generic, big relational database, relational database of everything. We have UDD for that. It just tries to export uh, views corresponding to common use cases. Um, the idea is that well, you have a special need, then you craft uh, a SQL query for UDD or an LDAP query or whatever, and uh, if it becomes a general need, that query can be turned into a plugin for UDD, and then it's readily accessible in whatever format to pretty much everyone in a self-documenting way. Current users of UDD, um, I've put online the, the aptxapian index version in depthx.debian.net. Uh, Screenshots.debian.net uses DDE uh, to, to get uh, package information uh, to, for its database. Uh, you can, it can be used to make completion in web forms. Um, and um, it can be used to um, emulate apt file without having a local file information. For example, this is a little script that just queries DDE for any package that contains bash and gives you the result right away without downloading all the package information. It's not a drop-in replacement for apt file because it doesn't support regular expressions because the way I, I index it to make it super fast. Um, no, but uh, the apt file author is here at DebConf and I need to catch up. And uh, the idea was to kind of not include it into apt file, but if there's no local database, app file can tell you there's no local database, you can run apt file update, or if you're in a hurry and you don't want regular expressions, you can run r apt file and, and get the things. Um, So obviously this can be used to add extra features into package managers. Apt can make a fetcher uh, to get data out of it, uh, although it may not be a good idea because its data is dynamically generated if, if we start updating it with lots of apps. Um, I don't know if it uh, copes with the load. Um, it can be used to feed more external websites that show Debian data. Um, for example, if someone makes a corporate distribution and has a website showing the list of packages, even in the intranet, and, and they want to feed that package database with information coming from Debian, they can pull it out of DDE without problems with parsing it and, and so on. Um, or... Um, Different flavors of Debian can put online a DDE of, of their own, which only shows a, 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 redu a, a personalized view of the package database. So people can set up DDE instances to um, you know, provide different views, and if they keep the same tree layout, 
it, it would be just a matter of switching the, 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 the software that uses the data to use a different URL. In terms of deployment, it's a Python WSGI application, which in theory you can deploy in any way you like. Uh, because WSGI is, a, is an extremely thin, um, small and simple interface that you can put into a CGI, you can put it into a web server, you can put it into pretty much everything. Um, in practice, if you deploy it as a CGI, it does not scale. If you deploy it as a standalone web server with Python, um, Web Python modules that turn a WSGI application into a web server, uh, you have all sorts of problems because none of those really have a clue about streaming data. Uh, there is one that has a clue about streaming data, which is Cherry Pie 3, but it doesn't have a clue about dependencies because it conflicts with, with Cherry Pie 2, which is needed by pretty much anything else. Um, because they made a complete incompatible rewrite without changing the module name. Um, if any of them uh, are listening today, that may explain why things like Turbo Gears are switching away from it because it's a hell to live with. Uh, Python paste, um, if, you're, if you ask it to reload the web server, it will kill all the current streaming, um, which is not nice. Um, fast CGI needs careful tuning because it tends to say this um, this CGI process has been running for more than five minutes, I'll kill it. And maybe you are streaming the whole Debian package information to a slow machine. So, you know, a, a DDE query may take 20 minutes as far as I can tell because it doesn't generate data set locally, it can stream information. And on in the other hand, you can have something that processes the data as it, it streams. And uh, mod WSGI runs in the Apache process space, which does not sound like want to do. So ideas about deploying anything like that, which is basically a restful dynamic interface to all sorts of data would be appreciated. In terms of scalability, it's all read-only and there is no state. So it's a wonderland for cache, which is excellent. You can put varnish in front of it and be happy. You can use aggressive cache headers like everything I give you is valid for six hours because most of the information is generated, re is changes when you have an archive run. So it can be replicated, it can use DNS round robins because there's no state. But obviously if all web forms make a lot of small queries uh, and there's lots of people you know, using that feature, it may not scale. So it, it all needs to be seen. If apt starts getting data out of DD for some nice use case, maybe uh, all package managers will kind of kill the thing since it's dynamic, uh, you can't actually use the mirror network because it's generated on the fly every time. Um, nice things that could be done is JavaScript shops that get data from DDEs running in multiple places um, or that run on a server and get data from a DDE running on a different server. This is currently an issue because the security model of JavaScript does not allow you to query information from a different server than, what, than where you come from. And that's very annoying. Firefox 3.1 should have a support for a new webby protocol thingy that allows you to do that, but, well, it's come, that, that, that's kind of new and it's only Firefox. Um, DD supports JSONP, which is a standardized 
uh, attack against the HTML security model to allow you to get information from elsewhere. And um, it's absolutely painful. They also, uh, I can even add JSON PP, which is an even worse uh, attack against the JavaScript security model, but that road makes me sick. Um, and in terms of future development, uh, it's mostly on a works for me basis at the moment. Uh, I will change a couple of features of mine, but um, I won't do all the work because I don't have the time. Uh, I thought it was cool to provide the um, completion for package naming web forms, and, and I made it. And um, ooh, hello, uh, and so. Uh, it could be nice uh, if later I can talk to someone. Uh, the uh, it kind of. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm just stupid. Don't worry, it's all right. Uh, it, but if you want to upload. Uh, if you want to share extra stuff to it, uh, please write a plugin. I'll be I'll be glad to to show you how. Um. Current existing DDs is DD Debian Net slash DD. This runs on Debian machines. Oh. I guess uh, if you want it, I can paste it on, I can paste the link on IRC. Uh, dd.debian.net slash dd. As soon as they find IRC. No. Here. Okay. Um, and it currently exports apt file information, that index I showed you before to, to feed data to our apt file. Um, it exports data out of UDD. Uh, there's different views on the, the big, big package list and um, you can get package information, say um, all the packages on ARM for every distribution and uh, part of the archive. Or you can, again, go down and, so at this level you get basically every package in Debian or Ubuntu in any version of them, in every architecture of them, anything. And as you go down, uh, you can limit things to one architecture or one distribution or only main. Uh, yes? Ah, that's um, a full screen terminal that shows up. That's DDE, which is low in responding, unfortunately. Um, but you could do that. And I made a sandbox. Um, well, not, not quite a sandbox. I, I made an experiment with publishing information, um, st publishing static information. If you, um, I need to find a blog post of mine. Basically, if in your own home in people.debian.org or on merkel.debian.org, put create a .dde directory and put stuff into it, it will be published in all possible data formats and so on. So, for example, I, I put some in my, um, okay. 
this explains how to do it. It was done long ago. I don't remember anymore. But again, I, did, I don't remember it anymore, and uh, it's kind of self-documenting, except the page does not exist. Why? It's now called static data. Okay. So you just put. Um, sorry, no, you, in in this directory on Merkle, you put uh, a file dot yaml or dot json, and it will show up. So, very a, a very simple and really nice thing to do now. If you are generating any sort of daily statistics about the archive. Make it in uh, Python pickle or YAML or JSON, put it in that directory, and it will automatically be exported as part of the d.devin.net today. And that works. And that's, that sorts out the problem of how to publish data. And that this is a call for everyone who's generating any statistics to just do that. I'll Put this on IRC as well. Yeah, it supports YAML, JSON, and Pickle, and you just uh, put different uh, file, file name extensions, and it will do the right thing for you. You can build your own hierarchies. Um, you can, there is a way to add documentation to whatever you put online. You just put a file dot doc dot yaml or whatever that describes the data, and again it will appear uh, wh when you browse the the that those three it will tell what it is, and it's all documented here. Uh, there is a sandbox directory if you want to play with it, and um, everything you put is mounted inside the DD tree. And um, if two people put a f files with the same name, since they're mounted in the same namespace, the first person gets it and the second person is ignored. So if you have something to publish with a, a fantastically common name, hurry up. And then we have another DD at uh, Debtex Debian Net. Which has the aptxapian index of uh, all Debian packages. And, think of, and also Ubuntu packages. So if you want to do something like this you feed it with the uh, debtex.debian.net slash dd and you can already use it generate pack clouds and whatnot uh, and of course uh, the, the debtex.debian.net's got the polygen plugin which is extremely important um, again the interface is self-documenting it tells you how to use it by a javascript so I don't need to explain it. You just go and uh, you say, OK, how do I use JSON? And it tells you, you know, uh, this way. So OK, those are the two instances, um, the two public instances that can already be used nowadays. And I think uh, I mostly, I think I've shown all, and uh, I can take questions. I guess my question is, it, yeah, it's on. I'm just not talking very loud. Um, I wonder how many things in DD actually require um, dynamically queried data at runtime versus how many things, I mean, in all the data that you're having people upload to the sandbox is just static data. So I, w it, 
I think it's from an interesting design choice that you chose to let it pull in runtime data. Do you need it for the um, for the UDD and things like that, or could you do it entirely statically for most things? Um, I'd welcome ideas on how to do it entirely statically, because since if you have like a five a five level hierarchy, you are basically generating, I mean, if you, if you render that statically, you have a lot of stuff. Because, you know, different views on things. Um, it can be kind of fixed by limiting the amount of views we provide to only those that are useful. Which is a perfectly nice approach. And then you need to render them once for JSON, once for YAML, once, once for Pickle. So if you look at the data space that it's dynamically generated, it's pretty big, um, unfortunately. Package co name completions cannot be rendered statically. They ju can just be cached in memory uh, with trees and, uh, and so on. So, so yeah, it's a bit tricky. Uh, also, the static information that, that, that you can publish, it's read into memory because you can query, you can slice it when you query so uh, you can publish a hierarchy of directory or, um, well, hierarchy of directory would be static, but you can publish a YAML um, dictionary and then you can query only one entry of the YAML dictionary. Of, or if you publish a, a hierarchical JSON structure, then you can query it at any point. So I don't know about one interesting thing could be looking into new stuff like MongoDB. Maybe something can be done because they have these ways of indexing JSON documents and then querying them very, very fast. I don't know if that will help. I, I haven't looked too much into it yet. But yeah, the data space is huge. I, I'd like it to be more statical, but then it's probably less useful. So I'm a bit in two minds over there. But certainly, for example, for those very slow UDD queries, those can be turned into, uh, at least the query can be made once <laughs> and then cached. Somehow, that, that that can definitely that can definitely be done. Or actually, we, uh, instead of using UDD, I, it, it could be a, an interesting idea to generate a MongoDB of Debian package information, and then query it with their own fast stuff. I'm sorry, different microphones. Uh, would it be possible to? Um to feed um, images into this. Say I'm generating a you know, graph of some data that I've collected, and I would just like to put it into, so I don't have to store it somewhere else. Oh, <laughs> you could, yeah. if you can encode in JSON or whatever. Well, I would like to encode but this king. <laughs> I guess the easiest way is you generate a static place online with the images and then you spit your routes to it, which is what can be done for Debian org. You have a, a view where you can ask where's the screenshot of this package and, and you got a URL, which you can use then from JavaScript and package managers, whatever. I, I have a question. Um, in, in Edinburgh, we had a talk about data mining popcorn. Maybe mm -hmm. you remember, and are these data anywhere restored? And can I have access with uh, DDE on the, onto this data? Uh, no, you can't, mm -hmm. because DDE is has no access control whatsoever, mm -hmm. and uh, the data mining popcorn thing uh, gives you a sort of limited view over the popcorn information that we can't really package. Well, sorry, we can't really share because uh, it may lead you to know something about what someone has installed. 
No, no, I mean, I mean, it's it's results we we get. I, I just posted the, the the link because no, but everybody. Oh, okay. I just want to to, to uh, because this data mining was done uh, done and you got the results. Uh, Users who installed package foo have also installed package bar. That and so can definitely be pub there can definitely be a plugin for it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But I is anybody here who knows where these data are? I just hear the talk, and yeah. then nothing since two years. I know I didn't do that. Okay, it was someone else. It was uh, Alan Schröder. Yeah, I, I uh, just posted the link to this talk, but I haven't heard anything about this. For me, quite interesting data. It's it's interesting, but I didn't mm. chase it. And mm. if we manage to chase him and, and get the data out, and mm. if the data is still computed, it's definitely something that can be posted on okay. on DDE because you you put it in some index somewhere, mm. and then you yeah, just yeah. offer a restful interface to it, mm. uh, and done. Yeah. I think it would be very interesting for for if you even have a plug in in Synaptics or so. In, in and then you put it there, and then you yeah. know where to find yeah. it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, I think if there's no more questions, there's a few links posted on IRC, the slides will be available and uh, and if you couldn't see over there, you can see it back in streaming. <laughs> Fast forward only where you see the slides. Then. Okay. Thank you very much.